Hello everyone in continuation with the previous videos regarding the arterial supply of GIT. Today we are going to discuss regarding the portal vein which forms the major venous drainage of GIT. So just imagine it as portal vein and now let us see from where the portal vein collects all the blood and first it collects the blood from the abdominal part of alimentary canal. Then gal blade of then comes our pancreas, then comes our spleen. So blood will be collected from all these organs and it will be conveyed to the liver. The first part is abdominal part of alimentary canal, then gallbladder, then pancreas, then from spleen. All the blood gets drained into the portal vein and this blood is conveyed into the liver. So here, the portal vein enters into the liver in the porta hepatis which is present in the interior surface of the liver and in this porta hepatis, this portal vein divides into sinusoids and these sinusoids were drained by hepatic veins and these hepatic veins drain directly into IVC that is none other than inferior vena cava. So, in case of liver, the portal vein enters into the liver in the porta hepatis and there it divides into the right branch and the left branch that we will be seeing later. Then after entering into the liver, it divides into sinusoids and the sin blood in the sinusoids get drained into the hepatic vein and the blood from the hepatic vein drains into the inferior vena cava. So, now let us discuss regarding the formation, course and termination of portal vein in order where it is getting started and how it is getting ended. So now let us see regarding the formation of portal vein. Length of the portal vein is around 8 cm which is more important in MCQ point of view. And now let us talk how this portal vein is formed. And this portal vein is formed by the union of superior mesenteric vein. And this is the superior mesenteric vein. And the splenic vein. And our inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein here. So... The formation of portal vein occurs exactly behind the neck of pancreas. Behind the neck of pancreas and it occurs at the L2 vertebra level. And this portal vein divides into right and left branch when it enters into the porta hepatis of the liver which is present in the inferior surface of the liver. This is all regarding the formation of portal vein. So now regarding the course of portal vein. So this is our superior mesenteric vein which joins with our splenic vein here and this superior mesenteric and splenic vein get joined to form the portal vein which divides into the liver as right and left branches. So this right branch is very short and wider and this left branch is long and narrow and here already we had seen that this uh, portal vein is formed in the form behind the neck of pancreas. And here comes our duodenum. So now regarding the course, let us see. So this uh, so this portal vein forms behind the neck of pancreas, you all already know. It runs upwards and slightly towards the right, you can see. And it runs behind the first part of duodenum that we can see here, that it runs behind the first part of duodenum. And it enters and it, uh, and it moves in the right free margin of lesser momentum, that is porta hepatis. Like, here there will be bile duct and hepatic artery and along with this, this portal vein runs and enters into the porta hepatis which is situated in the under surface or inferior surface of the liver. Based on the relationship of portal vein with the duodenum, it is divided into three parts. One is supraduodenal and here it is retroduodenal because it is behind the duodenum, first part of duodenum. And this third part is called infraduodenal. So here we are going to see regarding one of the important and interesting aspect of portal vein blood flow. So the blood flow in the portal vein is very slow. So the blood coming from the superior mesenteric vein always flows in the right side of the portal vein and the blood coming from splenic vein and inferior mesenteric vein flows in the left side of the portal vein. So here there is maintenance of streamlined blood flow. 
and the blood from this uh, superior mesenteric vein drains into the right lobe of the liver the blood from splenic vein and inferior mesenteric vein drains directly into the left lobe of the liver so this is one of the interesting thing regarding the blood flow of portal vein there is no mixing up of blood now regarding the termination of portal vein this is the porta apparatus which is a deep fissure in the inferior surface of the liver through which all the neurovascular structures and hepatic ducts enter or leave the liver So here the liver is having dual blood supply where portal vein contributes for 75 percentage of blood supply to the liver and hepatic artery contributes for 25 percentage of blood supply. Blood from this uh, hepatic artery and portal vein will, will be received by the hepatic vein and this hepatic veins directly drains into the inferior vena cava. So as we already know when the portal vein is entering into the porta hepatis it divides into two branches one is right wider branch and left thin branch and longer here there will be cystic vein which drains into the right branch of the portal vein we will be having para umbilical vein which drains into the left branch of the portal vein let us see regarding the intrahepatic course of portal vein as I had already told that the portal vein enters into the liver along with the hepatic artery through the porta hepatis. This portal vein will be here and it divides and redivides into sinusoids. And here hepatic artery also will be running along with this portal vein. And this hepatic artery also ends up with the sinusoids. And finally here the oxygenated and deoxygenated blood gets mixed up like this. And finally this blood will be received by the hepatic vein present over there. And this hepatic vein drains into IVC. So now let us see regarding the tributaries of portal vein. So tributaries are nothing but the smaller branch of vein which drains the waste products of blood into the larger vein. So we all know regarding the formation of portal vein. So portal vein is formed by superior mesenteric vein and splenic vein. And here we know that the inferior mesenteric vein drains directly into the splenic vein. And here comes our superior pancreatico duodenal vein. The next tributary can be left gastric vein which runs along the left gastric artery which we had seen in the celiac trunk. Then comes our right gastric vein which runs along the right gastric artery which arises from the common hepatic artery. So then here at last in the right side we will be having cystic vein. And in left side we will be having para umbilical vein. So these are all regarding the tributaries of portal vein. One is superior mesenteric vein, the another one is splenic vein, the next one is superior pancreatico duodenal vein, then comes the right gastric vein, then comes the left gastric vein and at last comes the para umbilical vein on the left side and cystic vein on the right side. So now let us discuss regarding one of the clinically significant aspect of portal vein that is portosystemic anastomosis or portocaval anastomosis. So whenever there is any portal obstruction or portal hypertension we can see dilatation of veins in these portosystemic anastomotic areas. So first let us see what are all the areas where we can see this portosystemic anastomosis. Then we will be discussing regarding how it had been formed. So totally six areas where we can see the portosystemic anastomosis. The first one is in the umbilicus. So here in umbilicus, then in case of lower end of esophagus, we can see portosystemic anastomosis. And then in the anal canal, then bare area of liver. And then in the posterior abdominal valve, where we can see near the retroperitoneal organ like uh, in front of the renal capsule and rarely in case of liver we can see 
So the six places where we can see the portosystemic anastomosis, one is umbilicus, then comes our lower part of the esophagus, then in the rectal area and uh, fourth one in the bare area of the liver and then in case of posterior abdominal wall, mainly in front of the renal capsule and sixth, rarely we can see in place of liver. So, in case of umbilicus, we can see the anastomosis between the paraumbilical vein and the veins of anterior abdominal wall. Then, in case of lower end of esophagus, the branches of hemiasegos vein getting anastomosis with the left gastric vein. Then, in case of anal canal, we can see the superior rectal vein getting anastomosis with the middle rectal and inferior rectal vein. In case of bare area of liver, there will be anastomosis between the hepatic vein and phrenic vein and intercostal veins and in case of posterior abdominal wall the retroperitoneal veins arising from duodenum ascending colon and descending colon anastomosis with the retroperitoneal veins arising from the abdominal wall and renal capsule and in liver we can rarely see this portosystemic anastomosis so in cases of patent ductus venosus the portal vein connects with the inferior vena cava directly so this is all regarding the portal vein